Hi guys, this is Mark Davis at Optimum Technology Transfer. Welcome to you all. In another video of mine, we looked at the date function in Excel, one of the many date and time functions that are available to us as users of Excel. Now this happened to be 2013. As I mentioned uh, in various other videos, it really doesn't matter which particular version of Excel you guys are using. 2007 potentially, 2010, 2013, 2016 even for example. Uh, these date and time functions have been around a long, long time. I guess they will be around for a long, long time. Um, the previous video, as I say, or one of my other videos, we looked at the, um, the date function actually in a little bit of detail and it went something like this. Bear with me for a moment while I zoom in. That's a very simple example of the date function. You may remember if you've seen that other date uh, function video of mine here on YouTube, I then took that um, simple demonstration, simple illustration, and um, I used it to generate the order dates uh, for these guys, for the client for whom I'm working. They downloaded this raw data and unfortunately it wasn't in quite the right format for the purposes of perhaps pivot table analyses and so on and so forth. We had individual items or bits of data to individually say, right, it's this fourth day, it's the seventh month, and it's this particular year, 2013, for example, as separate items. But what I've done here using the date function is to kind of bring those three separate items together into the order date. Now, that was all in a previous video. Let me just move on to my second raw data sheet here. Another problem that certainly can arise, um, this is a different version of the same worksheet. There we go. There is the date function as it was previously. But what I've also kind of thrown into the mix here now, another problem is that, well, these guys have downloaded this data from some kind of system that they're using and it's come down in text. We can clearly see that all these supposedly dates, that's what they actually refer to, are all text. We can of course clearly see that uh, that data is on the left of the cell, always indicating text of course. I can easily kind of prove it. If I go across to the home tab, look at my alignment, there's no kind of real alignments going on there as such. That of course is right aligned. Um, that of course is left line again as text typically is so how do I create a kind of a proper date from that order date which is a string or text at the moment well I'm going to insert a column just to the uh, right there I'm going to grab that uh, that heading that caption that label and control drag it across to G1 for example. Now it's actually going to be a combination of things now. It's not just going to be the date function on its own. It's going to be a variety of different text or string functions which again are covered on uh, another one of my YouTube videos. Do search uh, for other uh, videos of mine here on YouTube. So yes it is going to start with the date function and it does of course have those three arguments year, month and day. But the problem is, of course, that that information in the cell to the left is a string. It's made up of 04, which is the day, 07, which is the month, 2013, for example, which is the year. Now, I'm going to assume for the purposes of this particular demonstration that it's all 224. It's kind of a medium date format, DDMM, YY, YY, for example, just for the purposes of this particular illustration, this particular demonstration, this particular video. So I'm going to need to, first of all, extract the four numbers from the right of that particular cell. That's my year argument using the right function. For the month argument, I'm going to use the mid function another one of the classic text or string functions in Excel. That's my cell. I'm going to start at the third character, which is where the month part kind of begins, and I want two characters, the 07, the 08, the 11, whatever. Close off my brackets for the mid function, comma separator once again. The final bit I need is the day argument, as we can see, of course, clearly highlighted here, which is on the left of the cell which particular cell of course, F2 in my case here, comma, how many digits, how many characters actually make up the day part of that order date as a, as a string or text, well it's two. I close off my brackets for the left and I close off my brackets for the date and I return or enter. 
and then copy that down back up onto it double click to fill it down through the rest of this uh, of this data set so using the date function combined with three text functions the year is on the right the month is in the middle the day is on the left it's a really good skill for every Excel user to have getting kind of comfortable familiar with nesting functions generally um, in Excel perfect done the job now these guys can analyze properly as it were sales across months across quarters across years and so on all the kind of classic pivot table stuff that you might want to uh, uh, incorporate into your Excel models for example so all of these order dates the download caused some problems they've all come down as strings or text no problem at all because what I've done is I've used a combination of the date function with three text or string functions to generate appropriate order dates for the client here. Let's just leave it F2'd on that to leave it like that. That's it from me guys uh, for this particular video. Um, that's it me, from me Mark Davis at Optimum Technology Transfer. Do search for other videos here uh, on YouTube. Take care and bye bye.